Ooh, what's up people, Dr. Wolves is right here and welcome to a rating, well pretty much you could say a top 10, top 15, whatever you want to call it, but pretty much I put out a poll a few days back saying on what you guys want to see, and I said I was going to say my least favourite to my most favourite type of game in the franchise. You guys demolished the, the voting poll and you got to be number one to be the Yakuza games. So well done to you guys if you guys picked the Yakuza games. But if you guys did not pick Yakuza games, don't you guys worry because after this video gets posted, I'll be putting up another poll so you guys can vote for the next one. So, I went ahead and looked through every single one of my Yakuza games from the very beginning to the very end. Meaning from the newest, the very, the very, very first game that came out. Over to the game that we have just finished during the live stream. As you guys know, Yakuza 7 Like a Dragon. There's a grand total of 15 games, minus two that I do not own because they are Japanese exclusives. They were on the PSP. I don't own them, so I cannot put them on the list. But a lot of people have been saying to me that they may be, be they may be the least favourite in their opinion. So, but either way, I've not played them, so I can't rate them. So First off, I need to tell you, what do you mean by the rules for this then? I always use the five senses like we always have for our senses. The five senses of gaming. For Yakuza, I put down these five sentences. These five senses. The soundtrack of the game. How good does how does the sound feel? The music, the soundtracks, the orchestra, everything like that. How good does it sound like? The look of the game, the sceneries, the cinematics. You may see the graphics, but I'm not going for graphics, people. I'm looking at the sceneries, the, the cinematics, and I think how well were they made. The story. How much of the story grasped us, grasped us to the very end that kept us wanting more until the very end. Number four, the controls. How well are the controls? Are they smooth? Are they clunky? Are they not really responsive? And the last one. How much time do you spend on it? So pretty much, how much time can you spend until there's nothing left to do in the game? So, yeah, I pretty much spent hours upon hours of every single one of these games. And I've actually figured out on what, what which ones have best things about not. Now, like I said, there are 15 games in this. So what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to speed through from 15 to number 6. And then I'm going to probably talk a little bit more about number five up to number one because the beginning they may be all about the samey i'll give you a quick reason why they're, it's low so okay so let's get this started right now number 15 you may hate me yakuza 2 on the playstation 2 now the main quick reason is because number one i bought this game recently it's the reason when i bought but mainly the look of it for a ps2 game it's not bad, it's not great, but for at, for its time, it was okay. The controls, on the other hand, were very clunky. They weren't smooth. They were never what they weren't perfect, but they weren't um, they weren't half as bad. But the clunky for the um, actual mini games that you can play, and also the um, the actual fighting is very clunky very clunky it was a bit uh, of, a, of a shame because it was actually a good story the story is awesome just letting that guys know it's a fantastic story but the soundtrack soundtrack could have been better but what can you tell it was a ps2 game they hadn't got the full-on orchestra and it was the beginning of yakuza of the yakuza series so i can't really bash on it too much but what really let it down the most was the amount of time i spent on it um there's not a lot of stuff to do back in the day because mini games they were very very short. Story was quite quick if you keep on going on it. Leveling up was quite a bit of a doddle. It was quite easy. It weren't difficult, and I even played it on hard difficulty, and it was still quite easy. So that was pretty much what I'm gonna say for number 15. Number 14, Yakuza 1 on the PS2. Same again, actually. Storyline was amazing. The soundtrack was um, once again it's the very first game that came out. Soundtrack was okay, but it wasn't really anything special. Controls, once again, they were clunky, as always. And also, the time spent was same again. There wasn't a lot to really go for. So, that's another reason why for Yakuza 1. Yakuza 3... Um, number 13 is Kenzen, which is a, the first Japanese game I put down. Now, 
there is a main reason why a lot of people like this game, a lot of people don't like this game. The soundtrack is fantastic, really, really good soundtrack. The controls are nice and smooth. Time spent, I didn't spend a lot of time on it. There was a few mini games that were good, but there were some mini games that, number one, I couldn't do. Um, Storyline, it's it's not really canon, but it's pretty, it's not canon from Yakuza, so that's one thing to say, it's not canon at all. But they're using all the Yakuza characters in it to play these fictional characters who are pretty much relative to history of Japanese culture. So that's not bad if you guys knew the history yourself. I didn't know anything about the history, so I did have to try and get myself caught into the story. Didn't really catch into the story as much, not like 1 and 2, but I looked forward to it either way. The look of the um, of the area, the cinematics, they were good. It felt like the old classic Japan on, from the old past histories. It was very nicely done. Okay. Number 12. A lot of people may be thinking why I'm putting this. It's because it's made by Yakuza themselves. Fist of the North Star. Now, Fist of the North Star, like I said, it's not a Yakuza game. But it's made with the Yakuza franchise. Because they got all the actors from the Yakuza games into it. So it has to go into this. The soundtrack is kick ass. Really kick ass. Because it literally takes me back to the old classic anime films of Fist of the North Star. Because it is an anime. Um, the look looks like the literally the whole entire place the sceneries it felt like max uh, mad max when you're doing the driving um the, the um, cities the towns they're all like all um it always look it looks like armageddon literally the whole place looks like it's the end of the world like like everything's all gone down to shit so um it looked fantastic on what it supposed to be story it could have been better it could have definitely been way way more better to for me to really grasp my attention to it um, but I spent a lot, a lot of times on it by like leveling up. But the mini games were so freaking fun. I loved the mini games, the cocktail mini game, and um, the the um, the hunts, the side quests. A lot of them were really, really fun. The story really let me down the most. Um, but the controls, how were the controls? Controls were spot on, really smooth, very easy, and never really failed me on any of my fights. Um, it, it, literally, the, the controls were smooth, really, really good. Number, th number 11, Judgment. Now, the Judgment is a side story of Yakuza. It's pretty much based in Yaku based in the Yakuza stories. The story was really, really good. I was really grasped into it. If you guys want to know about it, look at my stream when about it. I'll put it on the icon here if you want to see it. Um, the controls were nice and smooth. Sometimes they're a bit clunky when you're trying to tail people, which was quite annoying. Time spent on it. Well, didn't spend the most on it because the side quests were quite easy. But the thing that took the most was stalking people. That was quite annoying. But either way, great time to spend time with it. The soundtrack could have been better. I didn't like the soundtrack as much except for the opening. The opening was awesome. But in the mid game and at the ending, it uh, could have been better. Number 10, Ishin. Now Ishin is the second Japanese game. Now this one came on the PS4. Now once again, this is pretty much a pretty much a sequel of Kenshin it was way better soundtrack was amazing the look was still good as it should be still same again the story I couldn't get connect to it because I still didn't know any other history so that did let me down because that, that's my fault okay so that's why I lowered it down time spent on it like their own version of karaoke that was awesome I enjoyed that the controls to me weren't, weren't as good as the PS3 version of Kenshin so the controls for me didn't really act up for my own feelings <laughs> apologies I have to sneeze right let's go quickly to number nine number nine you guys may hate me again Yakuza 5 the one that everybody knows it was pretty much the start of back in my tie you may be thinking I should put this up higher but I couldn't at all soundtrack like I said is amazing the look is fantastic story was a main reason for it story was it was good as much as it could last when it hit chapter 3 I got started to get a little bit drifted away from it started to get bored of it because it was like there was no suspense it was like I know what's gonna happen here and it did happen so it was the biggest bummer for me to know about the story. Control was amazing. The controls were fantastic. Time spent on it. I spent a lot of time on the side quests and the minigames. Mainly the karaoke. But um, 
a lot of things about it. It was just that the story was that the thing that was it was really disappointing for me for Yakuza 5. I'm very sorry for the for the lot of you. I just couldn't get with the story as much. Number eight, Kiwami One. Now a lot of people may be thinking, whoa, 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 Kiwami One is number eight. Why? Mainly, like, like I said, this thing soundtrack was amazing. The looks. It could have been better because as I was playing it myself, I did see a lot of few glitches in that game and like I said, glitches are fun, but when you want to see a perfect game, you want, you, want, you want to make sure that there's no glitches in it. There was glitches in it. Uh, story, flawless, it's same thing as Yakuza 1, it was amazing and it was a lot more in depth of it because you had more of an expression of themselves and everything, that's the same thing with the looks. Um, the controls just as good um never really failed on me it was nice and good and withstanding and everything time spent on it um mini games weren't as good sadly i know a lot of people may be thinking what are you talking about the, the mini games were good the mini games later on you'd find out what more were the reasons why but the time spent on it the karaoke was okay it was good back of my tie of course um the hostess mini game it was okay but it wasn't as good as others in the franchise. Um, there was other mini games, the golfing, the um, the ba the baseball, the Sega stuff. They were lackluster. The um, controls weren't as good for them. But I digress. Let's keep moving. Number seven is Yakuza Three. Now this is another thing. I love Yakuza Three. I really do. The soundtrack is amazing. The story is fantastic. The looks. Uh, the looks could have been better. It felt a bit cheap for a PS3 game when it first came out. Uh, the controls were smooth as always, and time spent. I spent a lot on that game. I spent a really long time on that game, mainly because of uh, Tegra. Definitely because of Tegra, because it was like a start of it all. You wanted to know more about this guy. It was Goro Majima's uh, brother. Close caps. Um, so that's another reason for it as well, because you want to know, know more about him. And also, of course, the um, karaoke in that was actually quite good too. And their mini games. I know a lot of people saying, you're just talking about the karaoke, that's just one mini game. What about the other mini games? The other mini games were great, I enjoyed them, but as you guys know, everyone's all more interested in the karaoke's. Right, number six, we're going to start slowing down on my main reasons. Number six, Yakuza 4. Now, this is the same thing with Yakuza 3. Fantastic story. The look was spot on for what they should have been for the time of day of age of that game was being made. The soundtrack, flawless. Couldn't go wrong with it. The controls were good except for one or two things happened during the few mini games, but I let that slide. The time spent, I spent once again a long time playing it because there was a new character in it. It was a detective, we had to know more about him, I was playing as him a lot in the game to see what I could do, what side quests they, they did, and some of his side quests were awesome, and also Kidus and other people in it, it was just, oh, wow, really good. <laughs> Number five is when a lot of people may be thinking, what the hell is this so high? And that's Yakuza Dead Souls. Now, a lot of people know they really hate this game, they really do. But I digress. I freaking love it. It was new. It was fresh. It was the first time ever that they brought a game that was Yakuza related, but as a spoof. It was pretty much characters from Yakuza 2, Yakuza 1, Yakuza 3, Yakuza 4, and they've all put them all into one game. It was awesome. You get to play as Goro Majima, you get to play as Kiru, you get to pay, pay, play as Akiyama, and you get to play as one of the villains in Yakuza 2. Which has a freaking Gatling gun as an arm. How freaking epic is that? And what's not to love? It's Yakuza members that you love killing zombies. What's not to love? That is sick. The karaoke was awesome. The looks of the zombies were awesome. They were quite funny sometimes. The story was epic. It was like a good zombie film. It felt like Shaun of the Dead, but on steroids. It was that funny, but good at the same time. Time spent on it, I spent hours. I spent hours upon hours. I probably spent like at least three months playing that game on the PS3. I never stopped, and I still love it to this day. Moving on though to number four, 
Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. Now, this has a main thing about a theory for it. This is a main reason this is quite high. It's also a main reason because it is the last game that Kiryu was really in as a playable character. As you guys know, he turned up in Yakuza 7 and you know what happened there. I don't want to spoil it for you guys if you've not seen it or you've not played it. The soundtrack is amazing. Really good. The looks were... It was... It was good as its time. For a PS4 game, it was nice. Really nice. But sometimes when I was playing it, it did lose its render for some weird reason. But after that, after I give it a few minutes, it rendered right back up. The story is fantastic. It was heartwarming, but it was heartbreaking at the same time. Watching... Um, this is trying... I'm trying to be spoil free, but you have to say it. Watching Haruka grow up to be a young woman was so nice because you get to see her back in Yakuza 1 as a little child going up to a strong woman it's amazing uh, the controls once again they're flawless absolutely amazing and time spent I spent hours on it because I knew for sure this was going to be the last time we get to play as Kiru as the main character Number three is that new Yakuza game of the year, Yakuza 7 Like a Dragon. Now, soundtrack by far was amazing. The look was amazing for what it was going to be. I liked it looking like 2019. It looked like Japan when I last saw it. It looked uh, awesome. Story was so, so addictive. I loved it every minute of it. If you guys understand what I'm talking about, look at my live stream. I did the whole game. It was fantastic. The controls were spot on. For an RPG game, because it was going to be like Final Fantasy, Persona, Dragon Quest, them type of games mixed with Yakuza, I fell in love with it right away. The controls were easy. They were straightforward. Had a bit of a technical difficulty in difficulty, but I enjoyed it either way. Time spent on it. I'm still playing on it now. I'm working on my levels. I'm waiting for the secret boss, I'm doing a lot of mini games, as always, I'm just enjoying it as I'm going along. And that's why it's quite high, I'm freaking enjoying it still, it's so good. Let's move on to number two, is Kiwami 2. Now, you guys know what number one is going to be, of course you guys know. But first off, Kiwami 2, from the very lowest tier of Yakuza 2 on the PS PlayStation 2, being number 15 and having Kiwami 2 as my number 2 means a lot because I do love the story so much of Yakuza 2 but everything about it was quite not there it's not I'm not saying it's a bad game it's just my least favorite game to play because of how clunky it is but the clunkiness had gone it was perfect on what it was doing soundtrack was amazing the look was spot on it was crisp the story like I said just like Yakuza 2, but it had an extra in it. It had Goro Majima's story for Yakuza 0. So that's the main reason. And the time spent, I spent on it all day long on it. All day long when I was when it came out first off. I literally was, I didn't play anything else besides that game. It was that freaking fun. Um, the controls, like I said, it was smooth. It's just everything about it was just spot on. They did everything they could for Kiwami 2 to be just like Yakuza 2, but better. And it worked. Thank you, Sega, for making a remake like that. That was awesome. But that makes us down to number one, my favourite. And of course, it's Yakuza 0. Now, why is Yakuza 0 number one and not any of the others? First off, soundtrack. What can go wrong? Everything was perfect for the soundtrack. You had Bakamitai, Machine Gun Kiss. You had... Um, was it Machine Gun Kiss? No, no, it wasn't Machine Gun Kiss. I'm being stupid there. That was in Kiwami 2. Um, you had Bakamitai. You had 24 Hours Cinderella. You had um, Rouge of a Love. You got Three Times Shine. You have... Um, Brit um, Judgment. You had some amazing soundtracks. That besides the karaoke songs, there was also funny clips in the mini games. You had the phone call, you had the um, videotapes that you had to find all of the maps which were making me laugh all the time. 
you had the side, side characters, you had the naked dude that keeps going like this and start doing pelvic thrust all in front of um, Time spent on it, I spent the most on this game by far. At least maybe 150 hours, maybe 200 hours of it, at easily. I spent all day long on it. And the controls were smooth like a baby bottom. It was super easy, super smooth. It was smooth like my skin. It was brilliant, this game. Absolutely awesome. Story was awesome. It was heartbreaking, but it was also at the same time because you get to see the prequel of Yakuza 1, what happened to Goro, what happened to Q, why was he not in the Yakuza's anymore, what was the reason, um, the look, it looked like them days of old, it looked like the 80's, that why it was so freaking good, because it looked like it, and I've seen pictures of Japan in the 80's and it looked freaking awesome. So that's all I have to really say for it, Yakuza 0 is definitely my favourite, but my least favourite is Yakuza 2 on the Playstation 2. But I'd like to ask you guys something though. What is your favourite Yakuza game and what is your least favourite Yakuza game? For the ones that you have played. And like you said, like I said for me, I've played them all besides two of them. But how many have you played? And what is your favourite and what is your least? After this video, I will be posting up a poll once again on what you want me to see, want me to do next. With that being said though, the people are still going to see you guys for subscribing. I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio! It never stops, does it?